In the next several videos, what we are going to do is build our understanding of NMR spectroscopy, particularly with the purpose of being able to take NMR spectral data and use that to determine the complete chemical structures for molecules of moderate complexity. In order to get to that point, we need to start by building a foundation of understanding some of the basic terminology that we'll be using throughout to describe the NMR spectra that we are looking at. So three of the key terms that you will need to be familiar with are chemical shift, multiplicity, and integral. In the next few videos, what we're going to do is go into more depth about how chemical shifts, multiplicities, and integrals arise in NMR spectra. But for now, I just wanna make you aware of these three terms as they apply toward an NMR spectrum. And the reason we need to be familiar with these terms is ultimately what we are going to be doing is particularly in proton NMR spectra will be our application. We'll be using these critical um, pieces of information out of an NMR spectrum in order to solve the chemical structure of a molecule. So these are key pieces of proton NMR data used to help us deduce the chemical structures of organic molecules. You've probably seen these terms before. For example, if you took organic chemistry in the past, what we are going to be doing here is reviewing these three terms, and then we are going to additionally build on that by looking in more depth at one-dimensional NMR spectroscopy and also adding two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy to our arsenal of tools we have to solve chemical structures. So ultimately the way I want you to think of the business of interpreting NMR data is think of it as a puzzle. And the proton NMR data, the proton NMR spectrum, will give you one piece of that puzzle. But oftentimes the puzzle is pretty complicated because molecular structures can be quite complicated. And so as a result, the proton NMR spectrum by itself is not sufficient in order to determine the location of every atom within that structure. And so we need some other puzzle pieces, and that is where we bring in such experiments as collecting carbon-13 NMR spectra and carrying out two-dimensional NMR analyses such as HSQC, COSY, and HMBC. Don't worry right now if those acronyms seem completely foreign. We are going to be going through those one by one in individual videos. And then what we will ultimately be doing is tying all that information together to solve the complete chemical structures of molecules. So in building that foundation, let's now take a look at an example NMR spectrum, an example proton NMR spectrum to illustrate what we mean when we say chemical shift, integral, and multiplicity, and where you would find that information on an NMR spectrum. So what you see on the screen now is a real life proton NMR spectra that was collected for the anti-malarial molecule that is shown here in the middle of your screen. So this is your proton NMR spectrum. In order to be conclusive about the structure of this relatively complex anti-malarial molecule, what the initial experimenters had to do was not just rely upon this proton NMR spectrum, but they also collected a variety of other NMR data as well to allow them to piece together with confidence all of the many connections between atoms within this molecule. In this video, since we're focusing just on the concepts of chemical shift, multiplicity, and integral, that's what I'm going to point out to you here. So chemical shift, first off, when we look at the x-axis, the x-axis is what tells us the chemical shift. So the chemical shift is the location of each individual signal. And the units for chemical shift are indicated as parts per million. You could also alternatively see in some NMR spectra, rather than indicating PPM, you will simply see this listed as the delta value. So there's my delta symbol right there to illustrate that is our chemical shift. And that's always going to be displayed on the x-axis. For proton NMR spectra, generally the axis runs from zero ppms approximately up to around 10 or sometimes 12 ppm. So generally zero to 10 ppm is adequate to capture 
all of the protons that are present within a molecule. And where we see a particular type of proton show up along the x-axis is described as the chemical shift. In the next video, what we will do is get into more depth about what factors determine exactly where along this x-axis we see these signals. In other words, what factors determine what signals we see toward this closer to zero end of the spectrum versus closer to 10 or 12 ppms. So that's our chemical shift. That's a term we're gonna be using throughout. Another term that we'll be using throughout is the term multiplicity. And what multiplicity refers to is we could also refer to this multiplicity as our splitting pattern. So what happens in the NMR spectrum is that rather than each proton showing up as a single signal, like I've drawn here, a single peak, instead, what is the case is that those peaks can be split into multiplets. They can be split into sub peaks. So what we are going to do in a couple of videos from now is look at what is the origin of that multiplicity? Why is it that the signals along the x-axis for the most part are not these isolated solo peaks, but instead they're these peaks that seem to be split into halves or even in some cases many more than just being split into two halves. They're split into these complex patterns such as perhaps what you see right in this region of the spectrum down here by 7 to 7.5 or so that I'm highlighting with the laser pointer. So the splitting pattern is what you see, or the multiplicity as we can call it, is the sub-peak patterns that you see representing our individual protons in the spectrum. And that also will give us information about the exact chemical environment of each proton and hence give us a major clue about the chemical structure of the molecule. Then the third piece of information that we can glean from a proton NMR spectra that we're going to get into in a later video is the integral values. The integral refers to how many equivalent hydrogen atoms make up that particular signal. So an integral is the number of equivalent hydrogens comprising a particular signal. In order for two hydrogens to be equivalent, that means they have to be in exactly the same chemical environment. That means they have to be totally symmetrically positioned within the molecule, for example. They have to be equidistant from electron withdrawing groups. They have to be essentially interchangeable within the molecule. They have to be indistinguishable from one another to be equivalent um, hydrogens. And so the integral value represents how many of these equivalent hydrogens compose a signal. So if you had, for example, a CH2 group where both of those two hydrogen atoms were in exactly the same chemical environment. They were positioned in the molecule so they were subject to the same intermolecular forces, then what would happen is that those would show up as a single signal and it would integrate to two. So the CH2 group, the hydrogens there, would integrate to two. if they're in the same chemical environment. If they're not in the same chemical environment, then they would show up at two separate positions along the x-axis. In other words, they would have two separate chemical shifts. And that is sometimes the case that two hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the same carbon, for example, this CH2 group, could show up as two separate chemical shifts, as two separate signals along the x-axis if, for example, you're looking at a structure that is restricted in the rotation around carbon-carbon bonds. So keep in mind the integral. The integral is going to represent the number of equivalent hydrogens that compose a particular signal. Often that information is tallied up in the NMR spectrum. 
So in this particular spectrum, these values you see here listed toward the bottom are the experimental integral values. Keep in mind these have to be integrals. They have to be whole numbers um, because of the fact that they are representing the number of hydrogen atoms. And you can't have half of a hydrogen atom in a particular molecule. It has to be an integer. And so in the case of these, some of these numbers that um, don't quite round to integers, such as 1.12 over here toward the left-hand side of your spectrum, you would generally round to the nearest whole number. So that would round down to one, for example. And so what we are going to be able to do with these integral values is you'll be able to count up the number of hydrogen atoms that are present within the compound that you are looking at here. And so those number of integrals that we calculate up corresponds to the number of signals that you see or the number of unique chemical shifts in the spectrum. So in other words, each unique chemical shift within the spectrum will have an integral that goes with it, where the chemical shift tells us about the location of each signal along the x-axis. It's telling us about the environment that that proton is in. And the integral tells us how many hydrogen atoms compose that particular signal. So if it integrates to one, that means there's just one hydrogen making up that signal, one hydrogen in that particular exact chemical environment. If it integrates to two, that means there are two hydrogens that are in that particular exact chemical environment. If it shows up as three, fine, it's a CH3 group. If it shows up as something much larger than that, um, for example, in the case of some molecules, you could have integrals as high as like nine. That could potentially represent having three methyl groups that are all symmetrically placed around one another, such as a tert butyl group. So if you had like a tert butyl group and all three of these methyl groups were interchangeable, meaning they were all symmetrically placed in the molecule. They're not constrained in terms of their rotation and where they're located. So they all show up as a result as a single signal. This could integrate to a grand total of nine protons there. So we are going to take the next few videos to go through in more depth the information and the origin of the chemical shift, the multiplicity, and the integral value to look at these further and use them to ultimately be able to take complex NMR spectra and translate it into the chemical structure that that data represent.